everyone, and welcome to this review note, second in a series of six on subnetworking. In this clip, I'll show you how subnetworking actually works. And as an example, we're going to subnet the fourth octet, very often done when we subnetwork a class C address. In the next clip, I'll show you how to do it the easy way. Our first step is to determine what is the maximum number of networks that we need and what's the largest network. In other words, what's the maximum number of hosts on any one of the networks? In our example here, we have a branch office. We're going to break our branch office up into three networks. We're going to have a Wi-Fi network for our guest access. We're going to have a network that has our in-house resources, our servers on it. And we're going to have another network which has our staff workstations. So three networks in total. And the largest one is going to have to handle 22 hosts. Our assigned network is this one. That's what we're going to have to start working with. Our next step, how many of the host bits are we going to have to borrow for our subnets? In other words, we've got with a class C address, these eight bits for hosts. We need to figure out how many of those we're going to take and turn them into network bits in order to be able to satisfy our requirement for three subnets. So we've said that we need three subnets. Fair enough. What we need to do is figure out what binary power can we use to give us at least three. We start off and use one bit. We take two raised to the power of one, which gives us two. Obviously, that's not going to work. We've got one bit. It can only have two possible values, zero and one. That's going to tell us how many subnets we need, and therefore, we're going to be limited to two. That's not enough to give us the three that we need. So that's not going to work. The other hand, if we use two, we take two raised to the power of two and gives us four. That's the maximum possible number of subnets that we need. That's greater than equal to the three that we need. Therefore, that's going to work for us. And the math is pretty easy too. All you have to do is remember how to multiply by two. So now the question is, how many host bits do we have left? If we start with our 32, we take the 24 that are the assigned network, we take out the two that we've borrowed, and that leaves us with six. So with those six, do we have enough left over that we can support the largest network based on number of hosts? Well, that's pretty easy to figure out as well. We take two raised to the power of six, the number of bits that we have for a host. That gives us 64. We have to subtract two because remember that if we use all zeros, then that's going to represent, as the host bits, that's going to represent network. If we use all ones as the host address, that's going to represent our broadcast. That leaves us with 62, which is greater than the 22 that we need. So that's going to work out just fine. Now the question is, can we get away with using any less than six? And it turns out if we use five, then we end up with 30 valid host address to the power of five, which is 32 less two. So what do we have left over? Well, we start off with 32. Again, we subtract the 24 network bits that we have is from our assigned address. We subtract the two subnet bits. We subtract the five host bits that we need in order to meet the largest network. And we got one left over. But we can't leave the one. We have to use it for something. So now we have to decide how we're going to use that. Normally, we make that decision based on our ability to scale the network. Right now, we're going to use three of the possible four subnets. So we can add one more network. We're also going to use up to 22 of the 30 valid hosts. So we can add eight more hosts. Normally, the plans of the business will tell us, do we need to use that extra bit so that we can have more networks or we can have bigger networks? For us, we're going to keep it with the four subnets, and that's how we're going to work our way forward. Now that we know that information, we can start figuring out what our subnet mask is going to be. Our given address is class C, so we know that 24 bits are going to be used for the network mask for that part, first three octets. That means the first three octets are all gonna have a value of one, as we can see on these three octets, and each one of those octets will have a corresponding decimal value of 255. 
The question is, what are we going to do with that fourth octet? Because in this octet, we know that part of the octet is going to be network that we borrowed, and part of it is going to be host. We know that we borrowed two bits to be used for subnet. Therefore, the first two bits are going to have a value of one to make them network bits. And then the last six are going to be zero, which is going to make them host. Now, this is probably looking a little bit weird to you because I've got some decimal values here and I've got some binary values over here. This is something that I've been doing for quite a long time because I think it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. I think everybody would agree that dealing with a string of 32 ones and zeros makes it a little bit tough. So although it looks a little bit strange, by working with decimal as much as possible and only representing the binary where we, where we need to, makes it just a little bit easier to read. Right. Now the last part of this is to actually figure out the last octet for the subnet mask. What we do with that is convert the entire octet over into decimal and 11 followed by six zeros gives us 192. That allows us to determine what our subnet mask is. Along with that, what's our CIDR value? Well, that's pretty easy. All we do is take all of the bits that are gonna be representing network. So the first 24 from our class, the two subnet bits that we borrowed from host gives us 26 and that gives us our CIDR value pretty easily. Now, normally I suggest to people don't memorize anything that you don't have to, because if you try to remember something and then you can't remember either when you're working or when you're trying to write an exam, you get yourself into trouble. But if you're gonna remember anything, try to remember the actual values of the first eight bits in decimal. So we see here from bits one, where we start off with a low value of one, up to bit eight, where we have 128, if you know those, then it'll allow you to add things up pretty quickly when you're trying to work things out in your head. Last thing we need to do is we're going to have to define the network map. So we know that we've got our assigned address. We know what our subnet mask is going to be. We know what our CIDR value is going to be. We know that we're going to have four subnets. For each one of those subnets, we need to look at the subnet address, the broadcast address, and the valid range of host addresses for each one of those networks. Let's start at the base, and I'm gonna use that combination of decimal and binary again. We know that the first three octets are given. They're never gonna change, that's our assigned address. However, in the fourth octet, things are gonna be a bit different because we have a combination of subnet bits or network, and we also have a combination of host. Now, if we look at our CIDR value of 26, what we can do is draw this line that you see right here down in between network and host. So everything to the left of that dividing line is going to be network and everything to the right of the dividing line is going to be host. And we're gonna start by considering our first subnet. If we look at the possible values that we can have for the subnet bits, the lowest value we can have is gonna be both zeros. Right. So the next thing after that is what are we going to do for the host part? We know that the host bits, whenever we're looking at an IP network address, are going to be all zero. So the last six bits are all going to be zeros. And now the one thing we have to remember is to always con uh, convert the entire octet, subnet and octet, to whatever is the decimal value. So we take all four of those zeros and we convert that. Really, really important to remember that we have to take the entire octet when we're converting, not just the subnet, not just the host, the entire octet. That gives us our very first network address. So that zero corresponds to the value in the subnet at octet, and then that is going to give us our very first subnet address. Now, how about our broadcast address? In the broadcast address, the host bits are always all ones. And if we take that and we convert, again, the entire fourth octet into decimal, we get 63. Hence, the broadcast value in the fourth octet. Keep in mind, again, the first three octets, never going to change. 
given network or assigned network, it's always going to be that way. Next part, what about the first valid host address in the range? Well, if we look at the lowest possible host value we can be, it's going to be zero plus one in the least significant bit. And if we convert that into decimal, we get, again, for the entire fourth octet, a value of one. So that is what goes into the fourth octet and the first valid IP address in the range. And if we want to look at the last valid host address, we want the largest possible value we can get for the host component. All ones except for the least significant bit. And again, if we convert the entire octet into decimal, we end up with 62, which corresponds to our last um, valid host that's going to be on that network. How about our second network? Again, we go back to these two bits that represent subnet. They were 0, 0. The next value up, 0, 1. And if we set the host all zeros, which, of course, we're going to have for the network, convert that to decimal, we get 64, which is our next network address. Like we have saw before, next thing we need to look at is broadcast. I set all of my host bits to one, keeping the network component the same, convert the fourth octet to decimal, broadcast address on that subnet. Next is our first or lowest valid host address. Again, all one, zeros except for the least significant bit, convert the entire fourth octet to decimal and we have 65 our first host address, and then to find the final host address, again, the host part will be all ones except for the least significant bit. It's the largest number we can have. Convert the entire octet into decimal, we get 126, and hence the last valid IP address. That's two of the four subnets. Let's get the last two done. If we look at our network address, again, we take those two subnet bits, it was 0, 1. We go up by one increment. It's now 1, 0. All of the host bits are, of course, 0 for the network address. Convert that whole thing to decimal, and we get our next subnet address. We have to get our broadcast. Again, we change all of the host bits to 1s. Convert the entire subnet, sorry, convert the entire octet to decimal, and here is our broadcast address. First valid host address, again, all of the host bits are going to be zero except the least significant bit, which will be one. We take the entire octet, convert that to decimal. Our first host is 129. And then to get our final host, we just toggle the host bits from all zeros and a one to all ones and a zero, convert the entire octet, gives us our last valid host address that goes in the subnetted octet. And to wrap up with the last or the fourth octet, again, we're going to take our subnetted bits. We go to the next valid value. So we add one, which is now one, one. Of course, our host bits are all zero for the network. And we convert that, which gives us 192 as the subnet for broadcast. We convert the bits to all ones for the host, take the entire octet and convert which gives us 255 in the subnet at octet. For the first valid address on this subnet, we again use all zeros and a one on the host, convert the entire octet to give us 193. So that's our first address. And finally, for the last valid host address, again, all ones and a zero for the host part, convert the entire octet, gives us 254. And that is going to give us the uh, end or the last address. So I showed you all the binary in this, just so you can understand the way that the devices on the network uh, work. And with that understanding in the next video, we're going to do it using easy math to subnet. So you don't have to worry about doing all this binding, uh, binary stuff. So wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and we'll see you next time.